In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to get referrals from your previous clients. Hey everybody, I'm Mike Claudio, owner of Winner Consulting and host of the Big Stud Sales Podcast. Farming your previous client base is one of the more wildly missed referral partners that I see on a regular basis. Those are people who have already trust you, already paid you money, already been happy, already experienced your services. They're the best to tell somebody about what it's like to work with you. And I see far too often that contractors forget to go back and communicate with those people. So today I'm gonna to share with you a few different things that I've done and used successfully to continue to engage with, continue to farm that previous client base. So the first is set up some sort of a reoccurring touch point. This could be an automated monthly newsletter that you email out. It could be somewhat of a quarterly or bi-yearly check-in. Um, it could be some sort of a email campaign that you set up on. It could be monthly, quarterly, twice a year. I think yearly is probably not enough. Um, and just my approach, I think it's better to be consistent. So I would say start at monthly, at worst, do quarterly, but give them some sort of information. What that email would contain is trends, what's happening, what you're up to, maybe any special offers you might have, new technology, new equipment, new whatever, you know, whatever it is that you sell. You know, it could be something where you you offer a reoccurring service like, you know, service work uh, for roofing, let's say cleaning, gutters, window cleaning, something that kind of has a more reoccurring and regular need, but give them something regularly, educate them, give them some DIY, give them some value, give them some what's up in our marketplace, right? Most of you, most of my audience is in a market. Well, what's going on in your marketplace? What are things that people wanna know about? How do you make them laugh? How do you get them engaged? So think from that perspective. I talked in a previous video about starting a podcast and a YouTube channel. If you're doing that, that email could be a great way to show people that you're doing that and get them engaged with your content, which creates more touches. But the first step is to create the mailing list. So collect people's email addresses. Um, programs like MailChimp, Constant Contact. There are several, like I use Keep um, as a CRM, Market as a CRM, Jobber as a CRM, Builder Trend as a CRM, all have the ability to send regular emails to your group of previous clients. Do not miss this. You have tens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of people you've engaged with over the last three, five, 10 years. Those are people that have forgotten about you if you have not been connecting with them. So they probably have friends or family that need similar services that they got. So stay in front of them from that perspective. The second thing that I suggest you do is post project doing a time check-in, right? So if you just complete a kitchen remodel or you just did a roof replacement or you just cleaned the windows or you just did some carpets, check in at that three, six, 12 month period. Three months would be one of those like, hey, is everything still working well? Six months, hey, is everything still in place? 12 months, are you still happy? And if so, would you refer to somebody? That little five minute phone call check-in is a way above and beyond. Think about it. Most contractors' biggest complaints from a client is they don't communicate well. You're proactively communicating before, during, and now after the project. It's just that additional touch point, which now gives you the right, you've earned the right by doing the work to ask for a referral. So check in, depending on what your service is, the time frame might adjust, but I would say at a minimum, six and 12 months post completion of the project. I think a phone call is the best way to do that. Emails don't go red. You know, text messages could be a great thing. Obviously, if you built some sort of rapport with that person, it's a quick text message. That is also something you can automate through many CRMs now. You can just basically say, okay, this person's done. You put them into a campaign where at six months, they get a text message. At 12 months, they get a text message and just opens the door for communication. Again, it also, like I said, shows that you earn the right to ask for referrals. And the third thing I think is super, super important that I, I know very few businesses that do effectively is client appreciation gifts. I spend anywhere from 10 to $15,000 a year on client appreciation gifts. I did it when I was with the remodel company. I did it when I was with the roofing company. These were all sub $5 million businesses. But if you look at it from an ROI perspective, if you send everybody, every one of your clients from this year, let's say you had 100 clients, and you spend $150 per client, that's $15,000. What's one project worth to you? What's one quality referral? What's one additional client worth to you? If your average project, let's say is $10,000, well, spending 15 grand to get two or three projects, that's 20, 30, 40 grand potentially that you get next year that you wouldn't have had otherwise. 
realistically, and I'll tell you from my experience, it's typically more than that. If you had 100 clients, you might get 10 to 20 people that'll refer you or hire you again for additional services. But it could be anything from a gift basket to a cheesecake to swag. Like I'm not huge on swag because it's more about you than about them but you can blend it in with other things that you might send them. But doing a, I do twice a year. I do you know, in the middle of the year and the end of the year, kind of a touch point just saying, hey, don't forget about me. Hey, here's something for you. Like for me, I'm a business coach, right? I send books. My clients are trying to get educated. So I look at what they want and I send books at the end of every year. I've done it every year I've been a coach. I will continue to do that because it's paid off every year. But you look at it from that perspective, like I spent, $4,500 on books, there's a lot of books, they're expensive, you know, but they're only 20 to $30 a piece. I'm gonna send two to three per client I had this year. So that's two to 300 books. Yes, it's time consuming. Yes, you gotta set it up. Yes, you gotta mail them, but I'll tell you that activity will 100% have an ROI on it. So do not forget to appreciate your people, not just clients, obviously this video is about clients, but I think referral partners and important relationships in your life are important to show appreciation for because it's, it's your job to continue that relationship. If you did a great job closing them, a great, a great job delivering the product, a great job at the end, closed out appropriately, they were super happy, why would you not want to stay in touch with that person? That person appreciates you, cares about you, is happy with you. That could be one of your best outlets for additional work going forward. So implement one of those strategies. If you're not doing any of them, implement one. If you're doing some of them, implement the one that you're not. But those three things, stay in touch with them via some sort of email campaign, do three, six, 12 month check-ins post project completion. Just say, hey, how's it going? Are you still happy? Is there anything I can do for you? Um, and then client appreciation gifts. I do two a year, in the middle of the year, at the end of the year. Um, and I even do this, just so I wanna, this is probably a question you might ask. I even do this for clients I did not have this year, but I had last year, right? A lot of, a lot of things are cyclical. Maybe they needed me in 2019, they didn't use, need me in 2020, but they need me in 2021. All of those things can be really valuable. It is never a bad time to appreciate people that have paid you money, have used your services, um, and ultimately trust you. You wanna stay in front of those. Those are great ways to add value to them without sounding needy, without calling and looking for yourself. Again, how's everything doing? Are you still happy? Here's some appreciation. Now you've earned the right to ask for referrals. So do any of those three things next year in 2021, and you will 100%, 100% gain value from that. So that's a great way to get referrals from your previous clients. Again, I'm Mike Claudio, owner of WinRate Consulting. And remember to win fast and win often.